Hey, Brad here. You know what's up. You know this is the best one. The one you've been waiting for. So, buckle up. I wanted to make sure that Dying Light 2 made my list this year because I sp spent a lot of time playing it and I had a really good time. And let me tell you, there's a lot of people mad at this game and almost everyone is mad at the same thing. The story and the characters and the world and the writing and, and the cutscenes, everyone hates all that stuff. And I knew that going in, but I really liked Dying Light 1. So when I decided to play this game, I, I think I took the suggestion from Carlos, but I skipped every single fucking cutscene from beginning until I was done and it was so much better because what's left is a really good open world zombie game with like parkour and it's that stuff it's like the getting around and the verticality and the jumping and and the zipping and the gliding and you get that parachute in this one and when you upgrade it you're like flying all over the place and you get to the the city area and you're climbing up these side scrapers and they're like platforming puzzles to like get up and it it's good it's fun and i like fighting zombies and it's just a, it's just this game's fun to play it was one of my favorite games where it just felt good to get around and um you know i mean i don't know what to tell you maybe i didn't have the same experience y'all did because of because i skipped all these cutscenes. but like i recommend it i recommend it even if you put it down just hop back in there and just play it your own way ignore the cutscenes, skip them all and just go out into the world and do stuff and find stuff because it feels good to level up those systems like they're good man you feel you feel like you're getting a lot more powerful as you play this game and it's just it's fun it's it's the platforming it's the parkour it's the verticality that stuff is it's good. So I wanted to make sure I gave Dying Light 2 its props because it's not nearly as bad of a game as a lot of people make it out to be. Uh, you just gotta, I guess, I don't know, play it the way I did, which, you know, just do it. Tiny Kin was almost a game I didn't play this year because um, I didn't even really get it to play for myself. I played a lot of Kirby with uh, Henry this year, but we got to the end of the game and we, we played a bunch of it and Henry was like, oh, well, I was still want to play Kirby, not really understanding that, no, we're done with it. We did everything. We got to move on to something else. And he's like, I don't get it. I, I, I love Kirby. I just want to play more. So I was looking on Game Pass for other, like, you know, colorful kids games that maybe he could play and i saw tiny ken and i remember seeing a trailer at like some indie showcase and going oh that looks neat it's like pikmin but kind of like a platformer and it seems simple so maybe henry can play it so i downloaded it and i was like hey have at it this is like a fun kids game and he was like oh this is cool um but i'm having a tough time i can't get up there hey, can you do this part can you do this part he always asked me can you do this part and i'm like no you gotta learn but whatever i tried it I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, here, here you go. Here you go. And the more and more I played of it, the less, the harder it was for me to give the controller back to Henry. And it got to the point where I was like, no, uh, just let dad do this. He's I'm, I'm going to get you some more tiny can. Uh, and I just got really hooked on it until I realized, no, this is not some kids game. This is a really fun uh, platformer. <laughs> and I, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's always cool to, when you're like little and you're all the levels are you know you know like chibi robo and honey i shrunk the kids it's cool when like your house and the different rooms are the levels and and you s sort of start you know with no tiny can and you're kind of only able to get on floor level but by the end you when you've collected so many of these things which expand your abilities your platforming abilities now you're way up you know on the top of the room and you're getting around and creating shortcuts and it's just it's a fun breezy game it's not deep it's not super long but it's just such a delightful surprise for this year it's it's i can't tell you how chill this game is i think anyone can enjoy this game it's on game pass highly recommended tinykin check it out bayonetta 3 oh man i've wrestled with this one a lot a lot 
mostly because they've given me sort of what I wanted out of Bayonetta. I'm sort of notorious as being kind of down on Bayonetta 2 because I think that game sort of sanded down all the edges from the first Bayonetta. A lot of the weird sequences and like mini games like, you know, riding the motorcycle and riding on the, the missile and stuff. You remember that shit from the first game. And it, it, a lot of people got like frustrated with those sequences, but like that's the kind of stuff that I kind of need in my in my Platinum Games games because like I think that's the thing that gives it those games a lot of personality stuff like the wonderful 101 and bayonetta and even like you know devil may cry back in the day just were more memorable because of stuff like that and bayonetta 2 i feel like had none of that it was just like you know it was just like a sanded down polished uninspired version of the first game and that really rubbed me the wrong way even if it was felt well made well now bayonetta 3 bayonetta's back in bayonetta 3 and all that weird shit is back in the game. There's so many more mini games and little strange one-off sequences and the whole combat system is centered around like summoning these demons that fight on the battlefield with you and you're controlling them and it's ambitious as hell and but let me tell you <laughs> it's uneven because I think I th for one I think I feel like they're doing too much and they didn't have time to dedicate to some of these sequences and they feel rushed they feel sloppy and it's disappointing because some of them they're such brilliant ideas um a special call out to like the giant bayonetta you know bubble bath in the sky boss fight which is so cool conceptually but like the execution was so sloppy but at the same time there are like like that demon slave like like combat system is actually feels really well developed and it's cool and it's crazy and then there are sequences like the jean stuff is actually surprisingly fun for me in this game these side scrolling like stealth missions and then they keep expanding on that in surprising ways but it it's uneven so there's like parts of this game where you're just kind of really bummed out because it's like ah, what is this and i think a lot of it has to do with the hardware it's on right nintendo publishes bayonetta games and they're stuck on the switch and the switch is old and this doesn't feel like a game designed for the switch it feels like a game designed for you know you know the game you know for being weird and crazy and it just happens to be on a switch and the switch really holds it back but ultimately I came around on this game wholeheartedly because it's got that bayonetta flair and all of that has to do with stuff like you know weapon design which is so cool and crazy in this one she has like you know a magic hat where she's all her whole combo system is like magic tricks and she's pulling shit out of her hats including like cars and stuff and there's like a microphone weapon where she like screams at the microphone and end a combo and it gives her buffs and stuff and then you're summoning these demon slaves which start out simple you know like like you know gamora but then but then you're then you're summoning like clock towers and trains and stuff and then they like that's those stuff is actually deep they have all these crazy moves and it's just it's wild this game is so fucking wild and even though it's it feels unpolished and it feels uneven and it feels way too big for its system and britches like it's still got that bayonetta charm and if you're a fan of the series like like i know we're kind of slumming it these days on this hardware but it's still worth it bayonetta is still cool she's still an icon and i'll still always want more bayonetta games but my god it's time for a big boy console and big boy hardware because it hurts we're suffering here man into the breach is a game i love and it actually got an expansion this year and that expansion is really great and it came out for phones and let me tell you it's an amazing phone game and i was at a point where i really needed a phone game because my new place of business i had terrible cell reception so when i was doing stuff like taking a number or when i was on lunch i had i couldn't look at twitter or whatever or discord so i had to play a game and let me tell you into the breach was perfect for that but after i put like a hundred hours into it i was like okay i need to find another mobile game and i tried different ones and nothing was clicking until i heard about this game slice and dice and i'm so glad i did because it's so so good i've been playing it literally every day since i even played it today before i recorded this it is an rpg roguelike where you have all these different uh, job classes on your side and you're going from battle to battle you're leveling them up, you're getting equipment. But the cool thing is this die system, right? Where where every class has like a dice 
a, a, a die assigned to it and you're rolling them each round and you have like three turns to roll it and you're kind of choosing when to hold them or when to roll again and you know that sort of tension is good and you know there's lots of games like this these dice games right but what surprised me about slice and dice is just how like deep down the rabbit hole they go there's like a hundred different classes in this game and each one has a unique die and they keep finding cool interesting ways to make like like the things that you can do with their dice like actually interesting and you start getting all this equipment that modifies the dice and 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 building these synergies with like these classes and and the different dice that you get and, and the enemies they're there's they're always introducing new enemies and they're always surprising you with new mechanics and it's just there's so much to do there's so much to unlock and it's just so fun. It's just perfect, perfect as a, as a as a mobile game. It's easy to pick up. It's easy to put down. The game starts in like a second, and you're out of it in a second. It's just it's it's just so good. It's so addictive, and and you know I'm probably gonna play it when I'm done with this recording because I still got so much to unlock, so many new classes to see, and they just get they get so weird with it. It's so creative. You got to play this. The problem is, I don't think it's on iPhone. I think it's only on Android. You can, I think it's you can play it on um, on a computer because I I think it's on it's not on Steam or anything but I think it's on itch.io so look into slice and dice it's not easy to find because there's not even a trailer for this game I think there's some other random game called slice and dice but get the one that looks like the one you're watching footage of right now because it's so good I promise I'm not steering you wrong this is a really cool game and if you don't have an android maybe you should get one because iphones are you know they're yuppie devices really let's be honest. okay i'm sorry i need to end this uh slice and dice it's great bye i feel like i've had a really hard time convincing people that triangle strategy is actually really good this year and i think it's because a lot of what people have said is that there's a lot of story like a surprising amount of story and it can be slow and it can be plotting and it can be sometimes an hour before you get back into a battle and you know what it's kind of true but let me tell you first of all i want to say that the in combat like the battle scenarios the map design the the, the character design the class design is some of the best I've seen in any strategy RPG. And you, you know I love this genre. You know I have high expectations. Final Fantasy Tactics is my favorite game of all time. But uh, Triangle Strategy doesn't have that sort of backroom customization, the tinkering that you get out of Final Fantasy Tactics. It's actually light on the RPG. Pretty much all of the strengths of the gameplay in this game come from the, the actual on-battlefield gameplay but it's really good here they have good map designs like lots of variety like good verticality but then they have like interesting abilities um to like kind of modify the terrain stuff like you know an ice mage who can like set up ice walls which which you know melt after a few turns and can be attacked by enemies but it lets you create choke points when you really fucking need them or a trapper class that can like set up spring traps that will fling enemies back and like fling them into each other fling them off cliffs and that's sort of like fucking with you know what the enemy does in terms of like their ai their positioning and your positioning and choke points like that stuff is so good in this game and then there's shit like you know like elemental stuff right where like that ice wall that was a choke point all of a sudden becomes a bunch of puddles that you then your lightning mage can you know drop down a huge lightning spell and, and st stun all the enemies standing in it like that stuff is so good but back to the story i just want to say while it's not exactly matsuno quality yasumi matsuno quality like it's it's actually like a pretty fun game of thrones light type you know, political intrigue, backstabbing, sudden betrayals, that that sort of thing. Like, there's a lot of that in this game, and it's pretty good. And while there's a lot of story and it can be plotting, I do recommend sticking through it because you have a lot of agency in where the story goes. Like, there's these points throughout the story where you have to make, like, a big choice, and those choices can really change, you know, allegiances, where the story goes, even the places you'll be, characters you'll get based on some of those choices. And and the choices are not always up to you. I mean, it's your, you and your counselor are making that decision, but everyone votes on the choice. Like, giant game choices you have to go around and convince people through like dialogue argumentation like hey side with me when we vote because i really want the story to go in this direction and it doesn't always work out you know and sometimes you have to go down a path that just 
the rest of your people want to go down and you just have to live with it. And that's cool. You know, it, it, it gives you a sense of like, you know, ownership over, over the tale that the, you know, the game is trying to tell you. It, I like it. I was invested, but the real star here is what's going on in combat. It truly is in terms of on battlefield gameplay, one of the best like strategy RPGs I've ever played really. I, th I, I, I highly recommend everyone try out triangle strategy. Even if you're skipping all the fucking cutscenes, the gameplay that's there, it's so good, but don't skip the cutscenes. It's actually pretty good. In fact, as soon as I finished this game, I started another playthrough because um honestly you know once you skip those cutscenes it's just pure pure raw juicy uh tactical gameplay and it's really good here so highly recommend triangle strategy it's dope what else is there to say about vampire survivors the game was borderline free everyone on the planet has played it everyone loves it Except Nick, of course, he's weird because he thinks the game is ugly, even though I've been telling people that it might look ugly at first, but when you're at 30 minutes, no one thinks that game looks ugly. It's a visual feast, and it's amazing to look at, but uh, this is a very addictive and satisfying game, um, but it's not, I mean, what else is there to say? Uh, we've all played it. We all know it's cool. There's like a million things to unlock and a million characters to unlock. And even though you think it's like a simple game at first, then there's all these levels and bonus levels and like secrets and like deep secrets. And it's just fun. It's just fun. Once you start getting into evolutions and, and like theory crafting, like the best combinations of like, oh, I should get this sub item and this weapon so I can have all these different evolutions. But oh, I should probably still get the tome because the tome is great, even though the wand fucking sucks. I'm still going to get the tome. It's... Vampire Survivors is amazing. I don't know how I could talk about this game honestly for for however long I've been talking about all these other games because there's there's a uh, there's not much to say. I mean, just play it, right? The game is borderline free. Everyone should play it. Like instead of watching this, you should be playing Vampire Survivors right now because it's that good. Um, I should just be quiet and let y'all watch the the visual feast in front of you that is vampire survivors it's amazing you know i do want to say pretty powerful pretty powerful that that this game i don't know if it, it, yeah it launched this year and it kind of blew up this year even in early access at the very beginning of the year um but there's already been a lot of like vampire survivor clones and they're like they're like they're not even like throwaway they're good like real <laughs> developers have made games already based on vampire survivors and they put out polished cool interesting takes on that and that's that's pretty powerful when something can come out at the beginning of the year and by the end of the year there's already a whole genre of them that's impressive um yeah i don't know what to tell you i, I love how this game is is inspired by like castlevania and all those different sub weapons are from castlevania i think that's the first thing that got me curious and i'm so glad i tried it because you know it does look kind of lame at first, but but you get it. You get it. Five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. By the time you're twenty-five minutes in, it's just there's nothing like Vampire Survivors. It's so cool. I love it. I love it so much. It's dangerous though, man. You know, when I was playing games, to, I was trying to like catch up on all the games I played this year before I, I recorded all this game of the year stuff. I was like, I'm just going to play some Vampire Survivors to remind myself that I really like this game. And then like two hours later, four runs later, I'm like, why am I still playing this? I'm I'm burning all this time that I could be re-experiencing other games and trying new games. And I'm just playing Vampire Survivors. But, you know, you're never mad because it's always good. And then you shut up and you start another run because this game is, is the devil. It's, uh, it's a vampire. It, leech, it leeches your soul. Tactics Ogre Reborn. Hey, I'm kind of throwing y'all a bone by not putting this at my number one because it's not fair. This is a remake of a game that y'all know I love. In fact, they've remade this game before back on PSP. And in the year that came out, which I think was like 2011 or some shit, or 2010, I gave it my game of the year in one of these conversations, these videos, these award shows. I gave it my game of the year. And people thought that was kind of bullshit at the time because a lot of other cool games came out that year but i love tactics ogre it's one of my favorite games ever so surprise surprise it's here but it's down at number four here because i want to be fair 
because they have remade this before, but let me tell you, this is not a port of that remake. They took that remake of Tactics Ogre and ripped out all the innards yet again and redesigned all these systems. And <laughs> in a surprising way, to the point where like this, this game has a very different feel than it used to have, which... The original Tactics Ogre was very simple, but when they remade it on PSP, they added in a lot of the customization stuff that 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 kind the kind of stuff that made Final Fantasy Tactics really addictive that wasn't in the original Tactics Ogre, and that shit was great. But it was like so out, out of balance, and it was really grindy, and it was it was amazing. But I think they wanted a different approach, and now they kind of streamlined a lot of it. You know, it, this game is not grindy anymore. There's less customization, but they made it like a lot more balanced. They put level caps on story missions to make sure that like story missions, you couldn't just breeze through them because you were grinding out in the dungeons and now you're a god, right? They made sure that when you fought a hard boss, a character, an enemy that was really important in the story, that you were going to have a hard time. Um, and it, but it's good and it's challenging and I like that because I used to like steamroll through Tactics Ogre and now I'm like really having to think and they've made like the triangle strategy I talked about earlier the on the battlefield gameplay is better than it's ever been it feels more like a tactical game unless like a steamrolling you know god RP you know strategy RPG like Final Fantasy Tactics and you know they introduced this card system which you know, I, I thought I wasn't going to like, but but it's like a random element that appears in battle that can really change up the, the dynamic and the flow of a fight. And you get sort of this push and pull of, 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 of you know, times where you really feel like you're on, on your back foot and then you get a couple of cards because they spawn randomly next to you. And all of a sudden you get, you know, a huge critical hit and one of the most problematic, you know, enemy is now gone and the whole battle f battle turns, right? I love that. I love that sort of back and forth because that's not the vibe I used to get in Tactics Ogre and in Final Fantasy Tactics. It was definitely like bring in my god units and steamroll until the end of the battle. So I like that they made a more balanced, more tricky game here. And some of the changes that they've made from the PSP version are really smart. Like the crafting system is so improved. It's so much better. And I just, I love Tactics Ogre. It's so addictive. Um... And, and one of the things that they did is they added voice acting. This game, the original game came out on like the fucking Super Nintendo, but it was it's a Yasumi Matsuno script, and I love this type of story. I love how Game of Thrones this shit is, and I love some of the, the choices you could make in this game and the, and the paths you can go down. I, I sort of went down the lawful, almost lawful evil path in this one, and it's so great doing that with voice acting because you, you hear Denim as like, Oh, he's being more like of of a dick than I ever thought he was before when I was just reading it because there's voice acting now and it's so cool to have have that that take and I don't know it's just a great time I, I feel bad recommending this game to people sometimes it's not like an unqualified recommendation because it still looks like a fucking Super Nintendo game but it is a really deep and sophisticated strategy RPGs strategy RPG is one of my favorite games ever uh you should play it you know it's great i love it so much uh and it runs amazing on the switch it's hard to say that these days because even random mini games run like crap on the switch so i'm glad that it's snappy and responsive and quick it's it's a great switch game so pick it up if you have a switch or steam deck or whatever it's just it's it's a goat it's one of the all-time greats neon white is a funny one honestly I wasn't really skeptical of this game, but there's this weird thing where I think people in our community know I really like card games because, you know, I'm obsessed with Slay the Spire and whatnot. And I think when they first started showing footage of this at, at you know, at wherever it was, Steam Next Fest or Indie Showcases or whatever, they're like, oh, it's like, you know, a shooter but with, like, cards or something or a platformer but with cards. You like cards? Check out Neon White. And then it, the demo came out and everyone was talking about the demo and I didn't even bother playing the demo because I'm like, these idiots, they don't know what's for me. I know these cards aren't really cards and let me tell you, they're really not cards. This is not a, a card game, so don't look at those cards and, and, and be afraid because this is just a platformer, a time trial speed run type platformer with a story with like almost like a visual novel element there's a lot of story which is you know that stuff's like pretty good and and it's fully voice acted and and it might seem kind of cringy but in reality i think it's kind of channeling a certain vibe of like anime or whatever from like the early 2000s or late 90s it definitely like kind of reminds me of that era 
but whatever. The point is, it, the <laughs> the actual gameplay, the platforming is honestly some of the best I've ever. Like I think this is Neon White is one of the best platformers of all time. It's it feels that good, and I think if it wasn't that good, I don't think people would be as into like like you know the leaderboard chasing that they have been this year. And let me tell you, it's competitive. I don't really see people on my friends list that don't have anything but. But, uh, you know, uh, the, the diamond, the crystal rank. What is above gold? God, I forgot. Platinum? Um, everyone's chasing those platinum trophies and, like, trying to get higher and higher because it's so good. The reason it's such a good platformer, outside of just the way it feels and the controls and just kind of getting around these environments, zipping around, is, like, I think it actually has really good platforming level design. Like, going from level to level, I was surprised by how, like, different and distinct they were and memorable they were to the point where I can jump back into like an old level that I played hours before and just like every inch of it I just I, I remember I'm like I know this this shit is so cool and I think that's a sign of a really good platformer because at first visually it looks like it all kind of runs together but once you really play this game and, and understand like how clever like the design is you realize just how much effort went in to like really giving a sense of like distinct variety from level to level and a lot of that has to do with all the different like power-ups and stuff as you or the cards the abilities you get um they keep introducing as you play the game i was constantly being surprised by like how they managed to make yet another ability like interesting again right and i feel like at the at the beginning of every world or whatever or every time i saw like a new ability i was always like skeptical like oh they're not this is just kind of like that other one or they're not going to make this that interesting but then like you know two three more levels in you're like oh my god this shit is brilliant this shit is so smart and these the way they string it all together with like past abilities it's just it's such a well designed platformer and it's so addictive i really didn't think i would get into like speed running leaderboard chasing but it just feels fun to improve your your run to improve that line to find those shortcuts and and, and to, to shave off seconds not because i really cared about who i was in front of or uh, or behind in the leaderboard but just because it felt good to do it it just felt good to do it and then the gifts the gifts it was tricky finding figuring out all, how to get all the gifts and those would unlock all those all those bonus stages that had like really unique gimmicks gimmicks it's just ugh, neon white is it's so good it's it's just biggest probably surprise of the year for me now that i think about it i do have to think about it because that's going to be one of our awards but i just i love neon white um this is one that no qualifications i can recommend to anyone if you like video games play neon white even if you don't like the cutscenes and characters and anime stuff you can skip all of that um and just get to the get, get to the the platforming because it's good it's that good you gotta play neon white You might be surprised by how high this is on my list considering some of the stuff below it but let me tell you there were times when i was playing crystal project which is a terrible name it's not even project crystal why why is it crystal project i promise there are people who didn't buy this game because the title is so bad but anyways there are times when i was playing this game where i was wondering if, if even my number one would be my number one which is crazy considering well i mean you know what my number one is but I, I can't believe how much Pr Crystal Project just clicked with me. It, uh, on the surface, you'll see some like battle gameplay. This is like a JRPG with like a Final Fantasy V or you know tactics style job class system where there's all these different job classes and, and, and you're equipping like subclasses and you're kind of making those those synergies but also like the team synergies to kind of make the perfect team or whatever which is the shit i love so fucking much so i knew when i saw first saw a trailer and part of that trailer was showing me like the menus and stuff i knew this one was for me but was what i was not expecting is that this was also going to be like this really you know trick like challenging frankly like open world like no hand holding like exploration game like this is it almost feels like final fantasy 5 meets breath of the wild which is a crazy fucking thing to say but there's a lot of like platforming and figuring out how to get around the world and then sort of you know you know it's poking at the edges of the world and finding secrets and caves and and stuff and and then you start getting these mounts these these like you know you get like a little dinosaur that lets you run fast and you get you get a goat that lets you jump high and you get a fish that lets you like swim underwater and you're not just going underwater you're going down into the ocean and finding underwater caves and 
dungeons and like and like there's chests and stuff with loot in them and and let me tell you the loot you find in this world is actually like meaningful like i would i would climb super high because let me tell you this is also a fucking platformer and it's like it's so good i'm like i'm uh, i'm getting emotional just thinking about how much i love this game which is weird because i feel like i've tr- i've pitched a few people on it and they've tried it and they've played a few hours and you're like it wasn't really clicking but it's not until you really put some time into it you start getting these mounts th- and you really start exploring the world and the edges of the world that you really kind of understand the magic of this game this world is so fucking vertical it's insane i have always surprised by how high up you can go in this game and and i would go up really high and when once i unlocked the owl mount which would let you glide around which is essentially like link's glider from breath of the wild i would find myself flying into like really high level areas and i knew that because all the enemies were like you know red flames which means they're going to be like hard battles that are probably just going to kill you but i could like glide perfectly to kind of get on a ledge to get a chest and in that chest would be like really good meaningful loot and 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 to me when you're getting loot that can like completely redefine a build and how you think of of like how you've been creating a character like that means they fucking get it they get that stuff and so many games get that shit so wrong you know like fucking like witcher 3 or something i don't want to start ranting about cd project red but you know there are people out there who make rpgs who don't fucking get it but this game it fucking gets it and 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 honestly i can speak for an hour about in detail about why that is it's just so good the exploration is so good the combat is good it's not just that like it, it, it's that final fantasy 5 style combat like they surface all of the information you know they even show you the formulas for how they're coming up with the damage that they're that they're getting because if you're a fucking nerd like me and you really get into that stuff like like you you want that you hate when they hide the numbers and the formulas and 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 you know exactly the percentages of which things are going to hit and why they're going to hit that and how much exact damage that's going to do and i love that shit i love that shit in games and I love this game so much. It's so good, y'all. It really, really, I seriously thought it might be my number one game of the year uh, at times when I was playing it. And I don't know why my recommendation failed on some people, but I'm not going to stop. I think more of y'all need to try this game. I love it so much. If you like exploration, if you like RPGs, if you like, you know, good composition stuff and like customization stuff and and just if you like underwater caves and shit, man, there's so much to do in this world. It's fucking great. Oh, I love this game. I love this game. I want y'all to play this game and then tell me how much you love it because I, I need crystal project friends man i have no crystal project friends people who are really with me on this game and i want more of them damn it because i love it i love it so much yeah of course i mean where is it not number one i mean really i don't think there's ever been a year of video games where i haven't seen so much universal like agreement of yeah elder ring it's the best game of the year like for sure And that's probably because it's one of the best games ever made, right? I knew it when I was playing it, and I still believe it now. And I know there's a lot of weird backlash of like, no, it's not as replayable, and I prefer the tank design of Bloodborne or whatever. But, you know, those people are wrong and stupid. Um, But I'm not here to talk about them. I'm here to talk about this amazing video game. Uh, If you've watched a lot of my Game of the Year videos over the years, you probably realize that there are some, like, you know... Bloodborne didn't make my top 10 the year it came out, which is unheard of to a lot of people. Sekiro didn't make my top 10. I think one of the things I really like about the Souls games, and it's probably why I like Neo as much as I do, because those do make my top 10s, is because I like when they're really good RPGs. And let me tell you, Elden Ring is the best RPG from Soft has made. There is so much to find and do in this world, as far as like building your character making them more powerful these games are hard and intimidating but more so than any other souls game i got really into to you know finding all the shit to make myself really powerful because i've always heard about a lot of the cool like stuff you can find in these worlds but you really have to go out of your way you have to really go into new game pluses to find a lot of that stuff i think multiple playthroughs but here 
they're just in the world in places that make sense. They're in like dungeons and underground caves and you get to the end of them and you find something cool and it's like this cool new sword with this cool new ability and it's like, yes, I want to make something that makes this sword do a lot of fucking damage. And and that feeling of going from like feeling really weak to, to just honestly, by the time I got to Melania, I... I did not have as much problem with it as a lot of other people because I spent so much time making my character feel really powerful. I love how this is an RPG, but more importantly, it's it's the world. This is such an amazing, giant, enormous world to explore. Exploration is one of my most adored things. It's one of the reasons I play video games. It's why, you know, when I never had an NES growing up, but I had friends who did, and I would go over to their houses, and I would play these games, and I, back then, I didn't care about your Mega Mans, and your Ninja Guidance, and even your Castlevanias back then, it was stuff like Zelda, that was the shit that really turned my head, because it felt like a huge world that I was just living in, and I could explore, and find shit that was dangerous, that I wasn't supposed to fuck with, and they're, they are so good at that, you know, I get a lot of crap when I play these games because I look up a lot of stuff and I'm not looking up stuff to like make the game easier to kind of help me like beat a boss or yeah, what I like to look up are people talking about the game. I like to see tier lists and, and people arguing over what they think is really cool or like the shit that they found and and I, j I like to discuss that with them too right like it's just one of these like side little meta things that makes me enjoy video games right i wouldn't love final fantasy tactics as much as i have if i didn't read class guides with ratings on what people thought about each and every class right like i just love that stuff and there's so much stuff out there about elden ring that it was just great reading about all these different weapons and spells and and finding out that where that stuff was in the world and making these like quests for myself these quests that i would go on with these journeys to like places of the world i have no business being in but i knew there was something there that i wanted and like that shit was so memorable that's the kind of stuff that i i think makes like an open world like fantasy game like so like meaningful and like this world it doesn't <sighs> God, this is getting long, and we're gonna get off topic, but fuck it, it's my video, I could do whatever the fuck I want. I've been playing God of War lately, right? And that's also a big open world, but it feels like a world designed for the player. Like, every handhold and crack and, and crevice that you crawl up and crawl through, and, and even the chests that you find, they, they feel like they exist for Kratos to get around, to find. It feels gamey, it feels like fake and i think the reason that games like breath of the wild and now elden ring are so powerful they're so meaningful it's because these worlds they just feel like spaces they, they don't feel like spaces that exist for the player they just feel like well defined developed just just places and you're just in them they don't even want you in them right like you feel like you're going to places you don't belong you're getting to areas that like no one should go much less the player and that's really powerful and it's meaningful and it makes exploration exciting and when you open a chest and get teleported to Kaled and it's like the most horrifying thing in the world it's like this is this is the kind of magic that is, doesn't happen in other games because they don't want the player to get lost. They don't want the player to be scared. They don't want the player to like feel like they're finding things they're not supposed to. And like FromSoft gets it. This is, I think, their best game. It's one of the best RPGs I've ever played. I think it might be the best. I mean, it honestly ranks up there in terms of like like world design with stuff like Breath of the Wild, with Morrowind. I think it's as good as those just because it is... It's a place, and it's a place I'll never forget. I love Elden Ring so much. It's so good. And I don't care if you've replayed Bloodborne more. You're dumb. That's it. Sorry. I didn't. Well, I shouldn't end with the toxic thing. Uh, let me uh, tell you. Let me tell you. I really love the Blasphemous Blade. Did y'all get the Blasphemous Blade? I played a Strength Faith build, and I felt weak and underpowered for so much of that game. While watching all these int boys running around, you know, with their with their light armor and their magic spells, and 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 like, oh look at this beam! I can just melt through the sky. 
but when I got my blasphemous blade, I felt like my strength faith was justified, and my god, I, be I became so powerful. That is such a good broken weapon, but I love it. I love, I love that this game lets me RPG my way up into broken. That's the thing I couldn't do in Sekiro, and I love it here. I love it. Anyways, uh, you'll have a good year. I'll see you next year, where we're talking about, I don't know, uh, what's well, going to be game of the year next year? Um, Final Fantasy 16, maybe? I don't know. Anyways, that's it. Y'all have a great, uh, great, uh, new year. And that's it. That's my list. Sorry there's so many weird Brad games on there, but, uh, you know, had to be done. See y'all next year. <laughs>